As we know, you know, the MCs are the microphone controller, the master of ceremonies, however you want to kind of talk about, talk about that, you know, the vocal um, part of, of, of hip hop culture. Um, you know, but they, as I said, they were, they were a subservient entity in the sense of they were not as important. They kept the party moving along, you know, for a long time, Herc would get on the mic and he would rock, rock the mic in, in various, you know, various ways to keep his party going. But then he became, you know, when you start cutting up records and you're cutting up 10, 15, 20 second uh, get down parts, you know, you don't have a lot of time to like get on the microphone, you know, because your hands are doing other things and you have other things going on. So that's where the MC kind of came out of. And that was Coke LaRock, the first MC in 1974, um, you know, and things obviously sophisticated like Grandmaster Fa Flash and the Furious Five, you know, the Furious Five, they were those bad dudes, you know, on, on the mic, you know, um, they were real nice, you know, and some of the nicest in the Bronx, um, you know, Grandmaster Melly Mel, uh, Mr. Melly Mel, you know, one of the, like, the dopest MCs to come out and songwriters to come out of, of, of that era. Um, but still, Flash was, it was Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, you know. Um, it was always, you know... Um, the DJ and then the MCs, you know, so, um, but yeah, I mean, by the, like the late seventies, there was a lot of boasting and lyrics. There were organized routines, um, you know, chore choreography, et cetera. So everything advanced more beyond like just simply improvisation. Um, things got more, you know, they had start, started writing rhymes and rhyme books. Uh, Grandmaster Kaz, the one who had his, uh, lyrics bitten by Big Bang Hank and, um, Rapper's Delight, you know, one of the dopest lyricists uh, also of that era uh, and a dope DJ. Um, but a lot of the, you know, their lyrics were bragging and boasting, you know, and call and response, you know. Um, oftentimes these early rappers would boast about how dope their DJ was because um, that was, you know, again, like everybody knew who Flash was, you know, so they boast about how dope their DJ was. <clears throat> just some images of some early groups that are notable. Um, this is Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. You know, you're, you're looking at their outfits and you're like, what the fuck? Uh, you know, again, that's like part of like the disco vibe. Um, you know, that party vibe. I mean, it's kind of hard looking at, you know, looking at them, take them seriously. Uh, but, you know. Uh, especially with like the onesie spandex on, but you know, that was the vibe, yo. Um, uh, you know, we have uh, the Cold Crush brothers. Um, they were a little bit more street, you know what I'm saying? A little bit more, less about the disco. Um, even after uh, disco rap and rap records came out, they were still kind of more of that authentic brand of hip hop. Um, the Treacherous Three, very important um, uh, group. Uh, of the time, we listened to some joints by them, and then the Funky Four Plus One with Shah Rock, a female MC. You know, the thing is, with so much of the hip hop stuff that we cover, it's it's very male based. Um, you know, a lot of the pioneers were men, um, and a lot of the innovations in technique have come from men for whatever for whatever reason. Um, you know, but, you know, from the early, the early time, you know, the early beginning, there were women, female MCs. There were women on the mic doing their thing with great dexterity. Lisa Lee, uh, Shah Rock, et cetera. Um, you know, Roxanne Shante. Um, you know, throughout time, there's been dope female MCs. But, you know, hip, hip and dope female B-girls and graffiti writers like uh, Lady Pink, um, you know, but, you know, kind of the history is very centered on, on men, you know. Um, and then we have an image of uh, Africa Bambata and the Soul Sonic Force, again, on some interplanetary shit, 